Uh, uh, all friendly flank creatures get plus two power. Nice. So yeah, now you've way got better these... than Halakor ever was. Yeah. So there's and there's another guy in there who does while he's on a flank, he spreads his power. I I care. I'd have to look for the deck, but it just yeah. it became silly at how much power he was gaining, uh, just yeah. for being there. So and then so... the thing is, if you kill him, you got to move through the next guy. But now I have my ha- my four hazardous taunt guys, so that's stopping you from really wanting mm-hmm. to attack into my lines. Oh yeah, the hazard taunt guy is awesome. Yeah, he's Very really good. really good. So I think major step up for for Sanctum. Mm-hmm. Very like they have Epic Quest is still in play too, so they they actually do have some interesting win conditions going on. And like if I I just thought about this now, I didn't actually think of it all because I didn't as I said I didn't look at Sanctum that much. But with the amount of archive and logos. Logo Sanctum Epic Quest deck is a very real win condition. Very real. Very real. Um, like it's, and it's not only be on top thing. of that, Sanctum sticks now. And they have a yeah. lot of capture. Like, they have mm-hmm. an obnoxious. If I felt every time I played a Sanctum card, I was capturing something. One's like, yeah. just discard a card. And I'm like, okay, I got no purpose for this blinding light. I'll discard it. Give me one of your amber. Yep. Like, what? Yeah, it Sanctum felt really OP, but this is that was AOA versus AOA, so maybe not. I I think if you if you can get that law in play, I mean a lot of the stuff that Coda does is just super fast shenanigans. Forging at eight every time you forge is a <laughs> that's not easy to do. That's almost is that forging? <laughs> that is forging four keys. Yeah, yeah, like that's uh, that's saying you have, and that's just one house. There's a ton of stuff in AOA. <laughs> That can push that. Like, like we just said, Brobnar's way better now. Like, let's say I have Sanctum Brobnar with the, the Brobnar has my key cheat and also has stuff like Iron Obelisk still. Like, that's that's like you're going to be forging for 10. Good luck. Yeah. Have fun. Woof. I just thought I'm, about I'm, that. And when I forge my keys, I'm going to be sacrificing creatures who are playing Epic Quest. And, wh- so. and one of my buddies uh, pulled a uh, Legacy Grabber Jammer. I don't know if it was there in that deck, but that was that was a lot of fun to see. Yeah. Uh, right. Let's move into what I believe is the basement dwellers <sighs> this season. Shadows. I might have to agree. Of course, I need to play it more. And I, I actually have looked at almost all of these Shadows cards quite a bit. And wow, dang. Shadows might be lurking back to the shadows from which they came. They overcompensated uh. hard. Now, I mean, that's not to no, say they're all going to be bad because there's definitely things I see and I've seen some combinations where I'm like, okay, that could be good. Ronnie Wristlocks is a better urchin, you know? Yes, he is. He is a better urchin. They do have a legit shard. They got the very best shard. Yes. Action, gain one amber for each friendly shard. Every deck we've seen with shards have at least two. Yep. Honestly, even if this was a loan, an artifact that gives you an amber every time you call that house is very good. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's free amber. That's hard to remove. And honestly, even if they have artifact removal, there's probably more important artifacts in AOA they've got to remove than this. So this is pretty much every time I call shadows for the rest of the game, I get an extra amber, which pairs very nicely with Heist Knight. Not Heist Knight. No, no, no. Night Forge. Night, Night Forge, Forge, which is their key cheat, basically reads for three extra amber, I forge a key. It technically says four in the card, but it gives you an amber. Why not? Like, right. Just, um, so whatever. I think it's definitely got legs. It just has to be in the right order. There's some I, cards that I thought were going to be good, but then I realized I never want to see again. Um, yeah, there's that skirmisher that can't ever die that you want to die. Yeah, um, and there's the guy who has skirmish and elusive, who really just does nothing. nothing. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Sucker punch is kind of fun. It's an alpha. You deal two damage to any creature. Um, if it destroys that creature, you get to put it in your Archive archives. Mm-hmm. So that's fun and useful. Uh, Swindle, I thought it was it sounded really cool. It's like, oh, Alpha, okay, but I'm still stealing three. It's let me t- it's garbage, hot garbage. No, no, Swindle. I think when I first read it, the very first time I read it, I said it was immediately the worst card in the game. And some people will say, but it's stealing three. Guys, if it says Alpha and Omega, that means you play this card. That is your value. And then you for the end turn. your turn. You can't fight. You can't reap. You 
can't use artifacts. Nothing else. Like that is a dead turn. Yeah. <laughs> like, like swindle and it being a common. I don't know if you can have more than one in a deck, but if you can I have more than not. one in a deck, that is literally chains. Like, and, that's worse than bad penny. And, and the worst, the 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 bad thing about a lot of it is it seems like they got the biggest alpha and omegas. They, I think they have the most in the set. Um, well, I only know of one alpha. Oh, you mean just period. just in general, just in general. Uh, Lil this Nif is, is the an only omega. alpha omega card. No, no, I'm not saying like both. I'm saying like either having alpha or omega. Because here's the deal: uh, I can't play sucker sucker punch and swindle. I have to choose one. True. I either have to both... play sucker punch or I have to play swindle. And and they are, they're both alpha. Yeah, they're both common. They're both alpha. common. Yes. So it's it's just they seem to be a big pain in the butt. Now I liked life for a life before they switched the. Now that was another thing that was ruled on today to sacrifice a creature. You have to control it. A lot of mm-hmm. people were pointing to pawn sacrifice, saying, "Well, I can sacrifice any creature." Obviously not. Yep. That was obviously just a misread. Uh, and I'll tell you this: I did a little research over the weekend because I felt like there was less bonus ember in shadows than there was before. in, uh, yeah, now than there was before, and there absolutely is. Mm-hmm. Um, and pure, unadulterated, just steel is cut in half. I think I yeah. read three cards in this set that just said steel. There was no, there was no like, like if your opponent has more than you, then you steal. No, they just said steal one. There's three cards in the set that say steal one, um, and there was six in the last set. They just they feel weak. Yeah, I mean they you're don't losing synergize whispers, well. You're losing finishing blow. You're losing bait and switch, which is super lost. Um, so yeah, this, this, I, I might agree with you. I think I'm putting this at seventh without playing it, without knowing for sure. I don't think the legitimate key cheat is enough to redeem the house identity being gone. Like it's just not there. Yeah. It it feels like they way overcompensate, which like I said, playing the set and knowing kind of how it is and then getting that Delta bait and switch today. It's like, what do you guys? what are you doing? Like you really neutered them in the next set. Like really I, neutered them. I will them. reference one thing that did happen actually in, in the chat. Like someone was actually talking about plague rats. Like that is awful. Like, like eventually the rest of the team spoke up and we all oh, were it's, excited. It's on. fun. Everyone, huh? I played it. I got a deck with seven plague rats. It's fun. That it, I, that's fine. I have a ton of fun decks that lose games to competitive decks. They're still fun to play. Yeah, I mean, it's fun but to be like, rats, I'm going to play like, out four Plague Rats and deal 11 damage. <laughs> yeah, but like, that's like, that's op- like, obviously, when you're making a deck, like, we don't get to construct these, and every card in the deck is an opportunity cost slot where it could be something else. The number one value of Shadows still is the number one value is that it can move easily move your opponents off check and while it does it less effectively than it used to that's still its primary thing because it's not a board presence it's not a support house to set up other big turns with other houses you call shadows generally to move your opponent off check so if i have to get one plague rat and the minimum we've seen in the deck is four right now you're taking four of my remove opponent off check cards and giving me these stupid rats that is i will probably never be fielding a deck outside of sealed that has these things in it. Yeah, I got one with seven. Yeah. It was I mean heard, like I've I said heard four to seven so far. Fun to play. Um Did I mean but other than that, that's you know <laughs> you're not winning on plague rats alone, you know, let me just put it that way. Yeah. All that's right. A rough, let's rough card to have. Let's move into uh untamed. Uh again I think untamed is is top <clears throat> four. Somewhere in there. I haven't really placed them yet. I think this could be number one because this is the first car- like one where I actually like. And honestly, until I saw two cards, I I wasn't impressed at all. But those two cards, when you're looking at top vault decks, I think and uh, there's some debate on the team about whether I'm right about this. I think Heart of the Forest with the way Logos is set up in this 
immediately creates decks that have win conditions that are very hard to move off their win condition. Because if I have Untamed Logos, Sanctum with Epic Quest, or Untamed Logos, Mars with Double Key Abduction. like Oh, if I have... yes. I did. You asked me about this. I did get a deck with this card. I'm sorry. Now that I yeah, see the so, picture of it, so yeah, I did. What's going on here is you're basically putting your opponent into a position where once they get to two keys, if you land hard in the forest, they can't do anything until they remove your arc your artifact. Yep. And furthermore, this artifact does not leave when you remote access it. It does not care about Nexus. So there's less artifact control that can even do anything about it. Snudge just delays it for a turn and you replay it. Uh, same with grasping vines. Like all of these things are just slight delays in what you're doing. And the logos inside of this uh, set two is going to make it so you can set up your win condition super fast because you just need any of the mechanisms that exist in AOA to force two keys on your turn and you you can win the game. Land Heart of the Forest, have something in your deck that can forge twice in turn and then just have your average archive logos from AOA and you have a win condition. Yeah, I did that. Another card I really liked was Punctual Equilibrium. That is the the so what what we were projecting in Team SAS is that there will probably be somewhere around ten decks in the world that will have Heart of the Forest, Punctuated Equilibrium, a top twenty five percent logo set, and then any of the other two uh, like maybe Double Key Abduction or something like that that are going to be incredibly difficult to beat in. And don't all forget, of both Shoda and Key Charge were reprinted. Yeah, that's what I'm so. like. Like what I'm saying about your double key cheat, mm -hmm. but you basically have different options right now. You can have double epic quest inside of uh, Sanctum, which is very rare. You can have double key abduction, which is not rare. You can have Nepseed and key charge, or Nepseed and Choda, or key charge and Choda in the same deck in Untamed. There are basically, if you have Heart of the Forest, good logos. The there's a lot of X factors where you could potentially fill in the rest to create the double key creation. I think there's going to be around 200 very good decks that can do this. I think there's going to be 10 of those decks that have this card, this punctuated equilibrium. What that means is though out of those 200 or so decks, the 10 that have this card too will hit that combo at a stupid fast rate and will literally plow down the field in front of them in most cases. Yeah, Untamed seemed strong, so... Let's go through it one more time before we wrap it up. You're saying Untamed Numero Uno? I think I am. I That's my, and specifically with this one, without this one, I think if you take Heart of the Forest and Punctuated Equilibrium out of the set, I think it actually takes a big fall, like maybe sixth. But with those two cards, so I'm specifically only looking for decks with those two cards, honestly, mm -hmm. in the Untamed, but with those, like mainly Heart of the Forest, I, I think I'm putting it on the top. Um, yeah, I could agree with that, um, with those cards. That car, I mean, like, that's, that's basically the, the, the I mean, land. let's, let's go through our top, land. let's do our top fours, because I, I agree with you on Untamed. Number two, uh, I do agree with you on Mars. Three was Logos. Yep. And four, I'm saying either Brobnar or Sanctum. Like, I think that's 4A and 4B. You could either have really good Sanctum, or you could have really good Brobnar. It seems I, like they... I agree with that. I would probably go Robnar above Sanctum, but I need to play the Sanctum more. They've got a lot. They've got a lot of new coming coming at us. Where Robnar has a lot of what they used to do, just better. Yeah, Sanctum literally has like this wasn't really here before. So I need to to play more of the Sanctum and see if it if it can take over Robnar. But I they rest basically tied for four. Yeah, I I would I yeah, absolutely. But and guys, six seed is. Moving down to six, we've got Dis. Yep, and then Shadows. Shadows is is in the up is the in the doghouse. Yep. But I think that's all. That's all we really got time for today. We went way over our time, which is okay. Um, well, we I, had some new crazy stuff happen today. I, I will be day. again chopping this up and putting it on YouTube. So awesome. if if you can't listen to it all in one sitting, no, nope, don't worry. I will chop it up and put it on YouTube again, like I did last time. Um, real. Two quick things I wanted to kind of go through. Uh, number one, help out our sponsors. You guys can uh, go check out Inked Gaming for your custom play mats and all that kind of fun stuff. 
Check out the Patreon. I'm going to be putting up some more deck analysis here shortly. And again, check out the Discord, which is down in the description. And for Team Sass, they just opened up their new merch shop. Uh, yep, again, we have you a can merch find shop, that uh, down below. Mm -hmm. And uh, go check out Luxury Playstyles using their link again down below. A lot of fun with those guys. I love. I do love me some Luxury Playstyles. So we'll awesome see you guys place. all next week for, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, our wrap-up on AOA week. I know you and I both have plans of doing a, a bunch of events this week. Yeah, I'm going to be playing in five sealed tournaments. So I'll get the maybe... Um... Uh, yeah, I'll write down all the decks that I played and we could potentially talk about some of that, I guess. And you guys okay. can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'll be probably posting pictures of mine as we as we move along. So we'll see you guys all next week. All right. Happy forging. <laughs>